Today, we have with us a person who has understood not only water, but also the story this water flows on. Mr. Upendra Dhonde has been working as a hydrogeologist in the Central Groundwater Board Ministry of Water Resources and has experience working in this department of over 90 years. He has been posted in various parts of India, like Jammu, Pune, Hyderabad, and worked on many special assignments, such as village for revitalization in Jammu and Katwa district, spring studies in Basori, effects of micro irrigation on groundwater levels of Ahmednagar Taluka, aquifer mapping in Pune and Solapur district. He has also been an active part of workshops such as the Jalatsav, Pani Parishad, Paryavaran Sahitya Sammelan, and Jarajagar. He is also the author of some very interesting books like Jalasahabod Tantra, Adar Shabhav Jalara Khada, Jalakshetra Til Tantrikta, just to name a few. Before we start, I would like to give you a little brief about Tahan. Tahan was started in 2016. Our aim is to make India drought resistant. Since the last five years, our organization has been working very hard to make an impact on people and create awareness about the importance of water conservation and protection of the environment. Over the years, we have successfully impacted 1.4 lakh people, have been able to support and supply 29 lakh gallons of water and have planted over 7,000 trees. We at Tahan are learning, understanding and implementing as much as we can about water conservation. We are trying to reach out as many people in India as we can through our website and we aim to build a community of people who will passionately work towards saving water through new innovations and help us explore better questions. Good morning, sir. I, Divya Mahajan, on the behalf of the whole team of Tahan, welcomes you for this interview session. It's a pleasure having you here with us. Thank you. Sir, uh, beginning with the question, we at Tahan uh, aim to provide youngsters career options which they can take up that will make them consciously work towards conservation of water. You have been working as a hydrogeologist for so many years now. Please tell us about your profession and what aspects does one need to become a hydrogeologist? Uh, thank you very much, Divya. Uh, first of all, I congratulate your organization, Tahan, for taking up uh, such things uh, in water sector, uh, water and environment sector. Uh, choosing a hydrogeologist for such interview is uh, of course, uh, work to be congratulated because uh, people around uh, don't know much about the hydrogeologist. Who is the hydrogeologist? What work he used to do? Most of the people consider hydrogeologist as a person who can show them the location of the uh, dug well or bore well site. But it is not the case. Uh, basically, I am a, a geology uh, postgraduate and uh, now. Uh, last uh, since last 20 years uh, i'm working as a hydrogeologist in a government sector uh, hydrogeologist means uh, a scientist who is having a, a specialization in a hydrogeology subject hydrogeology subject is a, a study of uh, uh, occurrence and movement and distribution of the water underneath and uh, above the surface uh, basically, we used to uh, study the location of water and uh, solve the problems related to the water availability, its quantity, its uh, quantity, uh, quality also. And uh, this uh, work is uh, particularly useful in uh, predicting the uh, droughts and help people to manage whatever available water resources they have, uh, especially by uh, protecting the aquifers. Uh, uh, teaching them the um, reducing of uh, wastewater, um, uh, using water resources uh, more consumptively, uh, revitalizing the uh, resource structures, etc. Uh, since last 20 years, I am working in the CGWV. 
uh, its organization under uh, uh, this uh, ministry of uh, jal shakti mantralaya uh, uh, as you told in my introduction also i am having experience of working in jammu kashmir telangana maharashtra of course and uh, mostly my research is based with the management issues related to the ground water so moving on to next question you have worked in various parts of this country how do different geographies of the land and the landscape change the tactics and plans for any particular project and why is it important to study the land before setting up any water related project uh, it's a good question uh... today uh, i can dare to say that uh, our society is uh, still uh, too illiterate in terms of hydrogeological aspects uh, when uh, we consider any watershed they just think that uh, digging the river channels or trenches uh, on the hill slopes and that too very indiscriminately uh, that will uh, result in a drought free area they think that such diggings uh, Uh, that uh, rainwater will be stored in uh, all these channels and uh, diggings, and uh, it will automatically infiltrate in the ground. Will enrich the aquifer, and our area will be drought free. So this is, uh, I think, uh, the root cause of failure of many water conservation schemes, uh, either by government or uh, NGOs or the any uh, any scheme through social activities also. Uh, since uh, last 7 8 years it has significantly been increased so there is a uh, dire need uh, for the groundwater experts to tell uh, the need of scientific planning in the watershed we need to create uh, a scientific solution uh, like uh, for example uh, in our uh, uh, movement we used to uh, stress on watershed capacity mapping so its awareness among the people through education and plan imp uh, implementation it is much more needed activity uh, in recent times uh, every village must have its uh, watershed capacity map if they must uh, they must uh, know how much uh, water is coming to their watershed every year through rainfall or by other means uh, how much rain water is going to be underground how much of its uh, been uh, evaporating how much they can store how much they require for their agriculture and other needs so of course if they know uh, uh, they are able to quantify this capacity water capacity in their particular watershed then only then ca they can use it for a uh, they can plan for a proper use so watershed is nothing but uh, it, it is a mathematical uh, sort of uh, management uh, uh, but uh, uh, it has to be supported with the scientific evaluation of the uh, properties underground as well as above the surface so uh, this watershed understanding is very much uh, important and uh, uh, in present days uh, it's uh, it's lacking uh, the uh, competent or efficient uh, trained um, uh, expertise uh, is less available uh, it become more as a social work Uh, with less uh, inputs from the scientific listing so we are uh, uh, stressing more on that you have been a part of village pond revitalization project in jammu and kathua area so can you please tell us what it means to revitalize a water resource uh, river uh, village pond revitalization i started my career with uh, uh, when i posted in uh, jammu and kashmir uh, it was my first posting and uh, uh, you can say it was my uh, first as assignment as a village pond uh, revitalization uh, since then uh, till date i consider village pond as a, a first and foremost important uh, water resource uh, structures uh, one can easily say that a sufficiently big pond in a, any uh, as per the size of the watershed when it is selected at a scientifically accurate position in that watershed it can be a threshold of uh, keeping balance of water management in that area it it can be a pillar of the water management of that particular area it is uh, not only helpful as a storage point of view but it equally is important as a recharge structure also so surface storage as well as uh, increasing the uh, recharge of the aquifer in both way this uh, pond can help a lot uh 
as you might have read in our uh, uh, information ancient information uh, uh, through various books and uh, through various talks of the experts india has a, a very rich culture of having uh, village ponds every village was having a uh, pond and that entire agriculture economy was uh, spread uh, along that uh, uh, pond only so with time we forgot that culture and now uh, it is much more um, uh, need of time to revitalize all such ponds uh, what does mean uh, it mean by uh, revitalization it means to restore the silted ponds to redesign to uh, maintain it and bring it to the proper condition of use and then aware people with uh, its uh, uh, benefits uh, through the case studies uh, we are doing uh, at many places uh, i can have examples in chalisgaon in sholapur in uh, uh, near uh, around near and around pune so there are many such uh, case studies where a single pond has uh, totally changed the economy of the particular watershed uh, people in the particular watershed so in our country there there are so many ancient structures like you said like wells and ponds which were used previously but are now ignored Do you think that they should be brought back to use, and will doing this bring about any change in the parts where there are problems related to water scarcity? Yeah, uh, of course uh, it has to be. Uh, the main uh, reason behind why all old structures should be revitalized. I just. told you one example of the pond but not only pond there are other structures there is a water distribution system there are uh, types of various types of uh, recharge structures various types of uh, wells uh, all these ancient treasure it has to be revitalized it has uh, one has to bring it in use again uh, the main reason is that because these all old structures are located at scientifically perfect locations our our ancestor has studied it well and those structures are located at such a position so that they can give the full benefits of the recharge as well as storage so if this if we are um, able to uh, uh, restore all these structures and bring it to uh, use then uh, of course that particular watershed will be fully benefited uh, our uh, water literacy mission is more focusing on this to uh, even uh, by creating uh, new structures we are more forcing on to uh, revitalize or uh, revitalizing the old structures so uh, whenever we visit at uh, any uh, place any village or any watershed and meet people for awareing them regarding the water um, activities first of all uh, first and foremost criteria for our visit will be to find out the old structures in that particular area and aware people about them uh, or their benefits you have led projects of aquifer mapping in pune and solapur districts so can you tell us what aquifer mapping exactly means and why is it so important aquifer mapping is a um, uh, recent uh, very important uh, project uh, of government uh, central government uh, aquifer mapping is uh, nothing but it's a study of uh, a specific watershed for its groundwater resources Uh, capacity in terms of quantity as well as quality also uh, though it is a very difficult task uh, especially if you see in the maharashtra we have a hard rock formations uh, underneath the surface with a very uh, varying quality of uh, hydrological parameters uh, so uh, to study it and uh, to put it on the map is very much a difficult task uh, but uh, still government is taking up such projects at uh, selected places all over the country um but uh, uh, till date uh, this project is uh, in regional scale only mapping the aquifers uh, all over india that to at the uh, micro level uh, it is it's a big task it's a herculean task uh, as far as manpower is considered uh, central government or state government they don't have enough uh, hydrogeologist uh, with them uh, they who can go at each and every village and collect the um, data which is uh, vast data required and uh, prepare the aquifer maps there are different different techniques uh, indirect techniques of uh, aquifer mapping like geophysical surveys heli worm surveys remote sensing uh, like that and uh, uh, government or government scientists are uh, working hard on that uh, to 
uh, at least uh, go uh, not uh, much uh, accurate but at least go near to accurate to map the uh, aquifers and that to at smallest uh, scale so uh, but uh, the bigger uh, hurdle is uh, data collection i think um, uh, it has to become a people's movement people should be involved in the data collection so that it is possible uh, to get uh, local and uh, factual data the accurate data so this aquifer mapping till date uh, though it is a uh, it seems a pilot uh, this thing but uh, it is a uh, much needed and um, in future uh, there will be uh, uh, more and more uh, progress in this uh, so that uh, people uh, along with the government organization they can be successful in uh, preparing the aquifer maps at micro level micro watershed level so like you say um, why is it important that we study land and water in micro as well as macro level what significantly different uh, difference will it cause if the study is done in both aspects any uh, scheme has to be implemented uh, it has to be at a certain place in the watershed which we called it as a micro level and for uh, designing some scheme uh, some uh, recharge scheme or some storage scheme at in particular watershed we uh, we need the uh, accurate data of that particular area so there is a variation uh, for example watershed of a, some, a small stream uh, watershed of uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, we can say that uh, sub basin of the river or basin of the river so this is the classification watershed uh, so, uh, so micro watershed watershed sub basin and basin when we collect the data about the basin it is uh, it is a big uh, this thing big area and the qualities of one place not necessarily uh, match with the qualities of the uh, watershed of the same basin but other uh, area so this uh, um, uh, discrimination or this type of uh, uh, this uh, differences uh, arise and a selection of a particular site at particular uh, place uh, becomes uh, difficult so that is why we need the data around that particular area that means at micro watershed level and this uh, um, data uh, uh, it, with uh, such micro watershed level can give you the accurate results so broad uh, broad planning it's okay uh, broad aquifer for example in maharashtra what are the uh, basins uh, what aquifer capacity they are having all this broad data it's okay but if we want to implement one uh, any scheme at any particular place data for that particular watershed or for that particular place is needed and that is why that this macro and uh, micro uh, watershed uh, data depression uh, difference is there so um, uh, for uh, uh, any expert will say that micro level data uh, is very much important and it is equally very much difficult to collect because we don't have that uh, uh, system uh, we don't have that manpower in the government we don't have uh, that um, system uh, uh, with the NGOs. Now it is in a developing stage. Uh, government is also trying, many NGOs try to involve in that outsourcing type of things uh, are going on. And uh, hopefully uh, in future, uh, we will uh, succeed in that. So like you said, India lands in scientific planning of water related resources and projects. So what steps do you think it is important for us to take in order to bridge the gap um, between where we are to where we need to reach? Well, we'll take an example of Maharashtra, not all over India. In Maharashtra, there are 44,000 villages. Uh, so, uh, to prepare aquifer maps of 44,000 uh, villages, we need much data. And uh, we had only uh, uh, few hydrogeologists in uh, either GSDA uh, department or CGWB. Uh, in Maharashtra, CGWB have hardly 10, 15 uh, hydrogeologists. This um, uh, GSDA department, that is the state government department related to groundwater, they have 200 to 300 hydrogeologists only. So such a uh, minuscule or such a uh, uh, less this uh, man force uh, they they cannot go to uh, 44,000 villages and they can collect the data and uh, equip the map and guide the people. So uh, this this uh, system has to be uh, again uh, uh, revitalized. Uh, that that system. So recruiting the hydrogeologists, etc., etc., 
um, uh, it, it is it is it looks not possible uh, as uh, as far as government's uh, uh, budget and salary provisions and all these uh, things are considered so what will be the alternative the alternative is to uh, create a system in that particular village itself the self sustaining system has to be built up at village level so this uh, can be done through uh, this um, uh, when it, it becomes a people's movement for example i will uh, give you my my own example though i am a uh, government uh, scientist uh, i am doing uh, working uh, as as and when uh, uh, my seniors or my department uh, ask me uh, or they give me the assignments uh, to work for particular area for particular reason or with particular aims other than that uh with uh, my free time uh, my saturday sundays my holidays and all these things i had started one um, movement which is called as mission is a easy water literacy in marathi it is called as it is uh, located it is only uh, restricted uh, in uh, with maharashtra people so i you uh, a lot of work i am doing it is in marathi language only this uh, particular movement uh, in marathi it is called as sahaj jalabod abhiyan so basic aim of uh, this uh, a uh, uh, movement is to literate the people uh, with a uh, uh, full curriculum i have prepared a curriculum uh, a syllabus uh, with the basic uh, things that people should know so that when any government or non governmental scheme will be implemented in their area they will be able to identify the lacunas of the scheme the benefits what to do uh, uh, to refine uh, to refine the uh, design of the scheme uh, implementation policy of the scheme all these things has to be ed educated to the local persons and that is why we have started such movement uh, we are getting a good response uh, in it uh, basically uh, just i already uh, earlier also i said uh, water movement has now become a social Uh, prestige uh, uh, like uh, thing uh, uh, people think that when they say that i am working in the water sector uh, as a social worker or uh, uh, as a jalayuddha or jalanayak they will get the prestige uh, they will get the awards and they will uh, uh, they will have a uh, celebrity uh, status all these things has uh, attracted people to this sector but uh, they are lacking the scientific uh, uh, this uh, temper so i think uh, to teach them the things uh, uh, we must uh, literate them through such a movement like uh, uh, sarajal about true sir people do need uh, proper information about the water and how their geography around them the people today also do not know the importance of ground water so can you please brief us about why and how ground water is important and how can we increase the ground water level in order to overcome problems of water scarcity i just uh, earlier also i said india has a rich culture uh, as far as water management is concerned but uh, since some time since uh, some years um, uh, due to change in the uh, this uh, our administrative policies and our administrative systems now there is uh, ignorance uh, towards this uh, ancient uh, rich uh, management culture water management culture uh, as i said in recent times there is a trend that celebrities and uh, other partly literate persons working in the uh, this water sector has been uh, they are uh, just like uh, they are replacing the competent water experts they think that they don't need any water experts uh, they don't need any government uh, uh, agent, this uh, government technical officers um, and uh, uh, sadly the media or the government they are also encouraging such uh, half knowledge persons by giving them the publicity the awards but they forget that half knowledge is always hazardous uh, i can give many examples i have written lots on uh, lots of articles on this people needs to be water literate they should uh, come close to real water experts they should know the real scientific uh, things uh, related with the water sector uh, also experts should also take stand on water literacy or things going on uh, whatever going on non scientifically in water sector time and again they have to warn the society as well as government regarding the ill effects of such uh, uh, half knowledge uh, our mission easy water literacy has working hard to achieve the 100% of water literacy uh, though i criticize a uh, lot through my writing still i am very much uh, optimistic 
because people are also uh, uh, responding earlier people don't know what hydrogeology subject is what is groundwater what are the groundwater properties how groundwater movement behaves in a particular watershed underneath the surface uh, where to uh, dig the dug well or bore well how recharge provisions can be done in uh, those water structures all these things people will too much Ill uh, illiterate they just know to drill or to dug up the well and use extract the water as much as possible when that particular dug well or bore well dries up then again to find out the alternative place at alternative site and just uh, spending the money and time and everything and uh, uh, adding to the uh, uh, scarcity or uh, drought intensity again and again so so day by day uh, the things are worsening and um, this aquifers are emptying uh, people are uh, searching here and there for the alternative solution who can give them the accurate uh, site how much, uh, much much more water can be extracted like that but they don't know the recharge provisions they don't don't uh, want to know uh, to study the groundwater aspects of their watershed that for example, I will tell you a simple example. People uh, have uh, uh, one understanding that uh, they, uh, whatever, uh, as much as uh, deeper they will go, they will get the water. But actually, things is thing is not like that. Uh, we are getting whatever water it is uh, stored up to 200 to 250 feet only. Below that, whatever water we are getting. To percolate surface water to that level, it takes hundreds of years. Not, and whatever water we want to use or we are getting, it uh, that particular water has to be uh, um, renovated, like or recycled. For example, this year whatever rainfall we are getting and water, uh, whatever water recharged underground, when we use it uh, and empty it during the summer season, next year that has to be again refilled. This refilling process is not that much speedy as we understand. It is very different. It is very difficult to understand. It is not recharging at our, uh, at, as per the, our understanding. It is recharging at various rates at various places. So recharging any, uh, this uh, rainwater at some 500 feet or uh, 1000 feet, it is not at all possible. When we say that at 200 feet or 300 feet, we are not getting water, that means we have entirely emptied the that particular aquifer. And now instead of going deeper, we need to think about the recharge. So this type of understanding uh, people has to be aware about. And uh, the scientific persons or those who are having the knowledge of all these things, they have to take the stand to literate the people in such things. It was an extremely exper inspiring experience talking to you and getting to know about your work. What advice would you like to give to everyone watching this so they can save water from their end? Uh, as you might know that uh, uh, there is a uh, significant uh, uh, change in water scenario uh, in uh, last uh, uh, recent uh, years. Uh, that uh, particularly, uh, just I said, uh, dug well and bore well irrigation has went to uh, a much high speed. That water abstraction is going to be in high speed. Uh, so, uh, but uh, that recharge provisions are not been done as per uh, that uh, compared to that uh, abstraction speed. So uh, now it has affected uh, all uh, aquifers. Uh, not only aquifers, it has affected the society as far as drinking water, agriculture, industrial requirements are concerned. And most importantly, the, it has affected the nature also. I can say, uh, it will be not um, daring to say that uh, uh, it is like humans are proceeding towards the extinction by, ex by, by emptying such aquifers. So for fighting this problem, Mission Easy Water Literacy has given some solutions, uh, some ideas like uh, Nisarga bed, the water capacity mapping, uh, three layered recharge system like that. So we have prepared a proper syllabus a training and we are training the people. Uh, we are only focusing on awareing the peoples and motivating them to take up the work as scientifically accurate as possible, which is uh, uh, given in our uh, Sahaj uh, Jalabod uh, uh, syllabus. Uh, we are getting good response. Many people and NGOs are getting, uh, are getting aware about their mistakes and they are changing their uh, working patterns. So this will certainly help them to secure a, uh, a future for the next generation. So I will, uh, uh, in this uh, particular uh, place, 
uh, i can only expect from the people that uh, don't go for indiscriminate and uh, irrelevant type of uh, diggings uh, uh, for the uh, water recharge or don't go for the indiscriminate uh, uh, water extraction also uh, try to learn the things regarding the hydrogeology hydrogeology though it looks a complicated subject uh, difficult to understand difficult to implement but uh, people uh, uh, like uh, hydrogeologist or uh, hydrogeologists from government as well as non government structures they are ready to uh, give their knowledge to them the mission it is easy water literacy like things are uh, available for them to learn the things and they should uh, grab this opportunity they should um attach with such movements they should try to learn as much as possible uh, as uh, the things related with the groundwater science and then only they have to uh, work in the water sector so uh, i think uh, the uh, celebrity movements uh, and the or the movements related uh, with the social uh, status improving the social status uh, i think uh, it it will be a short term enjoy only but uh, long term it will be a loss uh, i think uh, uh proper linkage with the experts in the subject is the uh, only solution uh, for the uh, for the solution or sustainable solution of the uh, problems in the future it was an honor for me and the whole team of tahan sir to get in touch with you and have a chance to interact with you we are so glad that you could spare some of your time and join in with us i am sure everyone who will watch this will definitely be inspired by your work and will consciously save water from their end thank you for being here with us sir thank you thank you very much